Sports Day is brought to you by Barton Community College. Explore your future and get started now. Visit GoBarton.com. Okay, Sports Day in three, two, one. You put um, those active guards on the top of a 2-3 zone, and you have we have a couple girls that just have those long, active arms. Um, Sadie's one of them. She's got those long arms and gets a lot of hands on a ball. Um, she's good at anticipating and things like that. A lot of the top ten teams are coming out, and we want this to be a big premiere in Kansas wrestling for the girls. Um, I've had a few college coaches asking me if, if we can get them on the pass gate to come start recruiting some girls. So uh, we're excited to host this big event. Barton made the road trip Wednesday night to Concordia to take on the Cloud County Thunderbirds split with the T-Birds as the women win 58-43. to Barton men fall to Cloud County 68-57. to You've got to get back to your fundamentals. you got to get back to timing. You have to make sure you keep conditioning. But we're sure hoping as uh, whenever the time that we're kicking off for the last time this season that we're in a great position. That's the past for us. It's the now. Uh, it's a West opponent. It's a great rivalry that's been going on for years. Uh, very excited to be part of it. And uh, it's one of those things, you know, we have to show that we can win to make it a better rivalry. Great players make timely plays. And they brought him in there to make timely plays. The closer, so now somebody else has to step up. I think this really puts them in a tough spot because now when you think about it, they're going to have to come out of character and when try and get pressure. They're going to have to try and blitz. Assume that. We just don't know. He bet on himself. He won. And the best part about that is not for the Yankees. The best part about it for me is for the game. Because the game is bigger than any individual and any one team. Baseball won by Aaron Judd and staying with the New York Yankees. You never know what you don't know. There may be elements to this deal, maybe involving Paul Whelan. Who knows that we may never hear about. It's not just what they announced. So if people are assuming that's all it is, a straight one-for-one -one deal, I would not assume that. We just don't know. And good afternoon. Welcome to Sports Day on 1590 KVGB 95.5 FM, streaming live on GreatBenPost.com, a video stream that God only knows where it goes. Where I, I don't know. Uh, we've got coordinators that tell us about that. But anyway, it is the Thursday show. Steve Webster with you, Mike Corson in studio as well. Mike Hesher lined up as well on the program today. And the big fella. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Our basketball team is complete now. <laughs> it is. We've got some size. We'll definitely be able to run some, uh, some quality stretch plays against the other guys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Young Mr. Aaron Clark, he, he finally passed his background to Jack. Uh, you know, that, Georgia, that took a while. You know. Georgia strung it out of me. <laughs> <laughs> he is the newest employee at Eagle Radio, and, of course, he's going to be helping me on Great Bend Panther broadcast this season. And welcome aboard, young man. So what do you think today? Uh, you You're know, still here. I mean, the boss took you out, so that means uh, – you don't want to eat anywhere going to the games today, right? You're all well, stuck. Well, you know, I'm still still down to go to the games, but definitely may not have to stop for the Casey's Pizza with you there <laughs> afterwards. But I'm um, excited, excited to get in here on my first day, and I'm excited to get to work with some quality fellas like you guys. Well, look at that. He's off to a great start here today. I, they are quality fellas, especially you, Hesh. Doggone it. Hey, on the show today, we will be talking Grape and Panther basketball. Kyle Cree will be in with us today, also guard Braylon Council as they get set to open play in the Eagle Classic tonight down in Kingman. They'll be taking the boys and girls take on Sterling. Girls play at 6, boys play at 7.30. And so the boys are, Sterling boys rank 7th right now in Class 2. The girls are ranked 7th in the preseason. They've dropped their first two games as they lost a ton off their team from last year that uh, I think they went like 51-1 and one. Over the last two years, so that's not a bad record. But, uh, yeah, they've got some rebuilding to do. So we'll have that for you tonight on B1043 The Point. Hoist and Cardinals and Mike Hesher will be in Larned tomorrow for the semifinals of the Katie Classic. Kyle Haxton will join us here on the program to talk about their matchup with second-ranked Maxville. So there you go. A lot of football players on the basketball team. Are they going to take their football helmets? Gabe Riffle in the paint, is he's a beast, so be ready, boys. Well, that's the way Kuckelman plays anyway. They play aggressive defense, right? Well, I think he was talking about Sterling. but that's, Oh, okay, that's okay, my bad. No, that's what you asked. Thanks for Gabe Riffle is going to be a town team All-American. <laughs> no, he's six foot. He's not, and he goes and he does all these whirly bird moves. You know, he doesn't, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't he play just, like a big fella. No, he is going to be. 
and a good player. Sterling, even though they lost a couple kids off last year's team, Riffle was an all all uh, Heart of America League last year. So that'll be a good test for the Panthers. I'm certainly uh, know that they're ready to get back out on the court tonight as they take on Sterling. Uh, Cindy Beck talking about her defense. It'll be interesting to see if they're going to stay with that zone tonight or go man to man. I mean, uh, okay. And don't turn up your nose. I'm not even going to make any comparisons here, Mike. <laughs> Panther defense forced four, 29 turnovers against Junction City, 24 deflections, and 18 steals, nine of which came from Sadie Spray. So it'll be Great Bend and Sterling Girls at 6. Again, 545 on B1043, the point. Nathan Brockelman. They wrestle at Dodge City tonight. Duels, but a big event coming. You can see the story on GreatBendPost.com from our very own Mike Corson. Neat deal. Yeah, not only is it top tier girls wrestling, big big event for the community with all those kids staying the night, but he says lots of Christmas music, Christmas trees. Like what is <laughs> need some eggnog, some cookies. I'm gonna, I'm parking it. I'm going. And this is one that, you know, it's, they kind of got in on, on it early, so this can become a big annual event every year. I imagine it's gonna be fun. You it's one of the big meets before the holiday season, so why wouldn't it? If it if it works, it's going to stick around. Okay. Uh, why do you turn your nose up? You guys are missing Christmas. the biggest point. There are college recruiters coming to this. That would be the biggest point to me, coming to the wrestling tournament, correct? For the kids going on, for the young ladies that want to go wrestle on the college level. Give me that dead no, pad. Right, like. okay. <laughs> right, so I, I don't know. I forget what this. 33 teams coming. we got number one Dodge City, number three Wichita North. One of the Olathe schools is ranked number six. And he said most of the top ten teams, I haven't seen the full slate. But, yeah, it's not just an average tournament. It's going to be the kids who... When's it get started? Three o'clock on Friday, and I don't know how late they'll go, but then they start back up eight o'clock Saturday morning. I think they ought to wrestle outdoors like they do during the summer. <laughs> <you know? laughs> grapple on the gridirons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> grapple on the gridirons. That's so the greatest thing go, ever. Yeah. Yep. During the regular season. You can pull that up a little bit. It does stretch to six there eight. Is. Okay. <laughs> had, it, had it been down there and a little too low for me to get in there. But uh, get a little grapple on the gridiron going there. Uh, should be a great chance to watch a lot of high-quality uh, wrestling like uh, was said earlier. Yeah, but, uh, it's going to be awesome. See it. But if you had it today, you couldn't see if you were setting the <laughs> yeah, that's true. visibility 10 yards. Yeah, when's that fall going to lift? We've got to go through Deer Trail on the way down to Kingman. Yeah. Uh, Cole Reif had the call last night on B1043, the point. Uh, Barton men and women split on the road against Cloud County. Cloud beating the Cougar men 68-57. So Barton has now dropped a couple in a row. Barton women got a big win. Their first win on the road in conference play this year. They defeated... Cloud County 58-52. Cougars host the Pratt Beavers on Saturday out at the Kirkman Center. And Jeremy Combs will be in on the show tomorrow. Uh, Lance Leipold getting his team ready for the Liberty Bowl in Memphis on December 28th. Hopes at the time off and a chance to get some guys healed up. Will kind of recharge his team, get those players back playing the way they were when they jumped out to that 5-0 and start this year. December 28th in Memphis, taking on Arkansas. They started fast. Then they uh, they started 3-0, and spent two weeks at number 10 in the AP Top 25, then lost three straight to ranked opponents, then lost three of four in November. Mr. Emporia State Man. Did, uh, did any of you guys see what that uh, the Liberty Bowl could have been? I believe originally. Well, I thought it was going to be Missouri. Yeah, that was really exciting to get a chance to see Kansas versus Missouri, to, uh, re- reunite the border war there, but... Missouri didn't want to take it, and so now we get to see KU take on uh, Arkansas. But I was chomping at the bit to see oh, Missouri versus great. KU so, this year. So what bowl did you go to at Emporia? Uh, we went to the Corsicana Bowl when I was there down in Texas. Nice little D2 bowl for uh, them. Corsicana, uh, is that Corsicana, where Corsicana, yes, I believe so. Uh, and I think it's the name actually got changed now. It's not called the Corsicana Bowl anymore. Were the Corsicanians? <laughs> they were The Corsicanians <laughs> were the most polite and embracing people that I've met at a bowl game, and I've been to exactly one of them. So <laughs> yeah. so it's a bowl game for Division Two. so th- you guys go down a week early? Yeah, uh, about... Uh, Did they have a zoo that you could go yeah, to? Yeah, there, there's they, community events that we do uh, just in the community, like with schools a lot of times we do with them, and uh, just outreach programs, like to outreach to the youth. Uh, but apart from that, it's a lot of football and a lot of just being where you're supposed to be and where you're told at that time and uh, having a lot of fun while you're down at the bowl games. I told you about my bowl game experience. It was wonderful. We went to the Boot Hill Bowl and got to play Pitt State. That was just the funnest time ever. We didn't get a watch. 
<laughs> we got there 15 minutes before game time. <laughs> Get out there, boys. All right. Paul Hackett, he's not worried about the 13-game losing streak the Broncos have to the Chiefs. I am. It's got to end sometime. You mean Nathaniel Hackett? Nathaniel Hackett. Who did I have? Buddy you said Hackett. Paul Hackett. Paul okay. Hackett. <laughs> it was Buddy Hackett. It was Buddy That's Hackett. what the Broncos are calling their head coach a lot. That Nathaniel Hackett. Ooh. Yes. Wait a minute. So the Chiefs are nine and a half point favorites. All they got to do is score 13 points to cover the spread? Man, it's, yeah. But the Bronco defense still can bring it. It's the Chiefs and Broncos. Uh, Bart Scott from Bart and Hahn on ESPN talking about the Bills losing Von Miller. You can lose some guys, but, I mean, they brought him in, and it does change your defensive the defensive uh, he, philosophy because the Chiefs, we see how that it goes when the Chiefs can't reach the quarterback. Then they got to start sending backers, and that's what Bart Scott says. The Buffalo loses that. He says it drops him to the third best team in the AFC. And Von Miller brought a lot to that Buffalo pass rush, not only in the top-end pass rushing skills that he possesses, but in the letting A.J. Epinesa and Greg Rousseau get off the field a little bit so when he rotates great there, players uh, make timely plays and they brought him in there he uh but von miller just really ups their rotation from a good pass rush rotation to a great one and so his loss could pay dividends for the chiefs come playoff times not having to face von miller in the cold now this guy's too good i like it when you interrupt him we gotta, <laughs> <laughs> we gotta make it harder for him <laughs> Ian Fitzsimmons and, and, and Mike Corson with his nose just curled up talking about the best part of Aaron Judge re-signing with the Yankees is it's good for baseball. I, I don't understand the logic. I mean, what he's saying is it, it's cool that he's staying with the Yankees. Now, obviously, other franchises don't get that opportunity to have players stay with them because they can't afford to sign them after they bring them up through the minors and then they go and then they reach free agency and i.e. the royals and it does it with that price tag only a few clubs were in the market but it and it sounded like maybe he wanted to go back to the west coast and they did offer some big money out there but i he's suppose a, Yankee Stadium, yep, there's man. a prestige out there and he's got a short porch to hit all those home runs that's what i was going to bring up he wants to stay in yankee stadium so he can chase that al home run record again that's like having a home run record and you played slow pitch softball at rago okay You've been to Rago, haven't you? Uh, no, I, okay. I don't know if I have or well, not. That's a new one. Well, they had a 200-foot fence. Okay. I mean, everybody hit. I even had a home run out there in slow pitch. So, yeah, that was the thing. You played golf, you just stroke, stripe one, and you'd yell, Rago! <laughs> well, we'd be out there hitting home runs at Rago right now. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to sign with them, but they wouldn't, they wouldn't give me a contract for that. And finally, T.J. Quinn, ESPN investigative reporter. We might not know everything with the deal that brought Brittany Griner home for a convicted arms dealer. Meanwhile, and Paul Whalen. That's just, just where just, I was going to go. Hanging still, out there. He's a, yeah, he's a vet, and he's still in jail. I need to get a hold of my son today and say, but don't go roaming off into the Polish countryside, because if you get captured, all you did was swim in high school and play video <laughs> games. They're, they're not going to offer up nothing. You're done. Yeah, but That's, if he's a swimmer, he's going to – he'll. He'll escape or something. You already said the other day that <laughs> swimmers are the <laughs> baddest. <laughs> well, he can escape to the north in the Baltic Sea, or he can go south out of the – yeah. That, I don't know. That's – and our president's bragging about it, and yay. Okay. Hesh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's, oh, you're there's steam like coming out over here. <laughs> no, it's, I... it's like a sauna in here, all the steam coming out of Mike's head. <sighs> okay. I, I would s- happen to agree with him for the most part. I s- what didn't you agree with? The Baltic Sea? The Baltic Sea, okay, yes. Yeah, okay, that'd be a little cold at this time. It would be a little chilly. High school basketball getting underway. You mentioned the Eagle Class, Kingman Eagle Classic that uh, Aaron and me will be attending. I didn't show you that big table I've got in the back of the vehicle just in case there's not room. So we pack our own when we go on the road. Oh, I'm I'm a great pack. You know, I'll carry the table, no look, problem. Look at that, man! It's, you never offered to do that once for me, Hesh. The so six o'clock girls, Lady Panthers, and uh, seven thirty for the boys tonight. Katie Classic resumes tonight. Girls action four thirty at Larned High School. Kinsley will play Maxville, and then at five o'clock at Larned Middle School, Gary Wagner and Larned Mayor Buddy Tabler. I don't think he's the mayor, but I always call him that. Uh, they take on Spearville. 
Uh, Thursday, boys tonight, 6 o'clock at Larned High School, Buckland against Kinsley. St. John against Larned in the boys game at 6.30. You can hear those Larned games on Hits 106.9. And we might add, sports this weekend on Eagle Radio is going to be interesting if we can get it all in and all on between Great Bend, Larned, Barton Community College, Hoisington, and Kansas University. I don't have any doubt at all because I know who the guy is that's coordinating all this stuff. (laughs) Stacy? (laughs) Stacy's the one that knows where everything's going to go. You're the operations manager. You keep bringing that up. I'm just the jack of all trades, master of Maxville and Hoiston. We'll talk to Kyle coming up here in just a little bit. That, that, Maxville, they're strong. They play football beat, on beat, the court. Beat the Cardinals last year. I meant I said that earlier. Cockleman, they just play tough defense. Yeah, they really do. They get up on you. And Cockleman's a great passer from the post. So uh, that'll be a big test tomorrow. You can hear the Hoiston Cardinal games. Lady Cardinals will play Buckland at 430. Maxville and Hoisington at 6 on 100.7 Eagle Country. Ah, but the Amos Morris Classic in Russell, 6.30 tonight. Central Plains girls take on St. John's Beloit, and it will be Russell taking on Central Plains at uh, it's going to be about 8 o'clock tonight when they get the uh, game going. So that's the Amos Morris Classic. Uh, Emily Ebert scored 14, ran her streak, a free throw makes to 32, 24th ranked K-State winning last night. Women, 72-45 over UMKC. Mike Corson. Yes, yeah, a funny thing. They're number twenty-four. They're eight and one or nine and one now. They beat Iowa, who's number sixteen. Iowa beat Iowa State last night. Emily Ryan. So Emily tied her All-American teammate with fifteen points. Caitlin Clark, probably the best all-around player in the country, almost had a triple-double for Iowa as they win seventy fifty-seven. But if Iowa's got three losses and K-State has beat Iowa, why is K-State number twenty-four? No respect. No respect. They never respect the purple. In anything. Well, they got three losses, and they're like number six in the football pools. I wasn't bringing that. It's just that's what you always hear. So you. No, it's nice to see that program doing well. Yeah. So Iowa State does lose last night, though. So they had climbed into the top five for the first time in 21 years, and then they were ahead of North Carolina in the Phil Knight Classic and blew that one and led uh, Iowa in the first half and let that one slip away. So... Other free agent signings, Xander Bogarts goes to the Padres, and Hesh mentioned this yesterday, Wilson Contreras going to the Cardinals. And I've got TV numbers for the World Cup, but I guess if we need something else to talk about at the end of the show, we'll get to that. Hesh, what do you got for us? Okay, here we go. This is the injury report for the Chiefs and Broncos. The Broncos have six players on did not practice yesterday, including Cortland Sutton and Dalton Reisner. And as I tried to bring this up to Webby, Dalton Reisner, Reisner actually married a former Fort Hay State basketball player, Whitney Clappett. So there's your social media for the day. For the Chiefs, Joe Tooney and Kadarius Tony returned to practice yesterday. And Patrick Mahomes is listed. He has an ankle injury, I think it is, a foot. Something like that, so it could be. And yeah, you know, Kadarius Tony has more times on the injured <laughs> list than he has catches. Well, he's returned to practice okay, yesterday, okay. so have positive right. offense. Marcus Mariota was benched in Atlanta in favor of rookie Desmond Ritter. And one for Webby. England will have Raheem Sterling back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he, he flew back home to England to deal with fallout from a robbery at his home while he was in the World Cup in Qatar. He flew home, and now he's going to be back for their matchup. They play in the quarterfinals against France. If I remember right, they weren't expecting him to come back at all. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So that's why they're kind of surprised. So big, big, big get there for England to get him back uh, for the quarterfinals. <laughs> he's new. He doesn't know. <laughs> you, do, you got nixed your first day, man. That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him bringing the soccer talk here. Today. I don't know about this. This is. we got to thank Hesher for bringing the e-entertainment side of sports. You betcha. Relationships. And then there's paper downstairs, bud. You don't have to keep flipping this thing. I'm trying to save money for the company. <laughs> All right, coming up, we're going to talk Panther basketball. Kyle Cree, Braylon Council in, Kyle Haxton also coming up on the show here on Sports Day. Welcome, Aaron Clark. Thank you. Get that drag that big table down there, too. So, uh, Stay with us. If you need physical therapy, consider advanced therapy in Great Bend and progressive therapy in Larned and Hayes. 
Hello, this is Austin Alford. I'd like to introduce to you today one of the most popular pieces of equipment we have to train core strength, shoulder stability, core stability, and even to improve balance. Come check out the core sticks for yourself at Progressive Physical Therapy Center in Hayes. You don't need to hurt. Physical therapy can help. Call Advanced or Progressive Therapy and Sports Medicine to explore your treatment options and get your life back. Hey everyone, this is Cole Ryan, voice of the Barton Cougars. Attending sporting events for Barton Community College is great, but did you know you can support the athletic teams even further by getting involved with the Cougar Booster Club? The boosters help with fundraising for equipment and facility upgrades to give Barton athletes every opportunity to keep succeeding at the regional and national levels. Join the Cougar Booster Club as an individual or business. Call 620-792-9377. Become a booster today. Go Cougars! The Shop at Home for the Holidays $10,000 shopping spree is going on now. And you can scan the QR code today at Rosewood Bargain Barn. At 1215 Main Street in Great Bend, courtesy of Mater Plumbing Heating and Air, your Bryant dealer. Rosewood Bargain Barn has great deals. Stop in. It's a unique resale store where you can find quality resale products, including furniture, appliances, rugs, exercise equipment, and a variety of home decor pieces. And if you like surprises, you can enjoy their holiday sale and purchase a fun, beautifully wrapped holiday mystery box. Not only do you get great deals at the Bargain Barn, but you also get to feel good about shopping. All the proceeds go to Rosewood Roots and Wings Foundation, which helps to advance and improve the lives of people with developmental disabilities. The shop at home for the holidays $10,000 shopping spree you have until 5 o'clock today to scan the QR code and get yourself registered at Rosewood Bargain Barn, 1215 Main Street in Great Bend. Presented by Bauer Computers and Mater Plumbing Heating and Air, your Bryant dealer. Good luck. It's time to talk Great Bend High School basketball with head coach Kyle Cree on Sports Day. Welcome back. Sports Day here on 1590 KVGB 95.5 FM. Talk of the town time to talk Panther basketball. Very timely. Panthers play Sterling tonight in the Kingman Eagle Classic. Joining us in studio, the head coach, Kyle Cree. Also, Braylon Council back in. He's You're a veteran, man. This is, this is round number two for you, so... Great to see you again back here uh, at the 12th and Baker Studios today. Okay, uh, let's talk about this this Kingman tournament. The thing I really like about this going down there, you know, the junior varsity gets games, right? But you don't usually get like a tournament format where you can go out and tr- try to win first place in something. And that's what this this event has, Kyle. Yeah, and it's kind of a unique, um, um, I don't know, setup, I guess. So, like, there is a JV side of it, but they're, they're not necessarily like a champion for the JV. So, like, on Saturday. Okay. Um, the JV teams will kind of play depending on how the varsity does. So if, if ideally our varsity goes 3-0 and and we play in the championship game, then they'll play at 6 o'clock. So they kind of pair pair the JV teams with uh, okay. the results of the varsity. This event's been going on a while, I guess since 2002, so this kind of got a little tradition going to it, yeah, I think to it the, as well. Yeah, I think it's the 20th or 21st, so, and, and obviously being there for, for three years, um, I'm kind of aware with all the teams that are playing there and all the coaches and kind of what their strategies and, and philosophies and what they want to do. And, and today before we play, we'll have the opportunity to, to be able to watch all five teams before we play tonight. So um, I think we'll be prepared and ready to roll. Okay. Uh, practice. Come back after Friday night and get right back to work. So kind of talk about the how, how the early season workouts went this week here once the season's underway. I mean, it'd be interesting to see what Brandon thinks, but I think we had a good practice. We came in Saturday morning, and I think some of the guys were like, really, we're going to have practice? And, um, we, you know, we were in there for probably two hours, two hours and 30 minutes, and we had a good practice, um, talked about defense, um, our, our defense and our, our, our team defense and our on-ball defense and the way we're defending uh, pick and rolls and handoffs and stuff like that maybe wasn't the best. Um, so we focused on some of that and then just kind of sharpening up our offense. I, I think, you know, it always stinks to get beat that bad, but we didn't really show a whole lot. So we've really been focusing on some of our motion offenses and our set plays and stuff like that. So I think it's been a really good week. How the team responded well in the second half? Just kind of settled things down, slowed it up just a little bit, and got back to uh, the way you want to play. Yeah, it was kind of interesting to watch film and kind of just be like, just watch the guys and like their demeanor and the way they carried themselves and how they kind of slowed down and used ball fakes and stuff like that. So I think if we we come out of the game and and play that way, it's probably a lot closer. Um, But uh, definitely a good learning experience. Braylon, talk about the first half at Junction City and the second half. What what did you feel was the difference that you were able to outscore them in the third quarter and second half overall? Um, well, the first half we had way too many turnovers. Um, we didn't really like 
we weren't sharing the ball like we should. And we we're kind of sped up. It was bad. Is there any way that you can simulate that? I mean, you can run eight guys on one side, but then that that speed was was pretty. I mean, how do you get ready for that? I don't know that. <laughs> they play. They play really fast, and yeah, they're tough. Uh, you came back in the second half. Kind of talk about your mindset at locker in the locker room with uh, other guys. You know, getting ready to go out for that second half after things didn't go so well in the first. Um, just just like play harder, take care of the ball, slow down, run plays. And box out rebound. Back again for your your senior season. Uh, kind of talk about what your goals are going into the year. First of all, we'll talk about team goals and, and kind of what your teammates have talked about on what to get accomplished this year. We'll definitely want to go over five hundred easily, easily, really, and just like play the team because this team this team is fun. I think we're we're pretty close, but we need to share the ball some more. Uh, Individually, what have you wanted to improve on your game from a year ago? Uh, maybe scoring a little bit more and playing playing some better defense. Okay, eight steals and twenty five tonight. That'd be that'd be a good way to get it started. <laughs> you get Sterling tonight, and a team that uh, you know they've been in the state tournament. I think three straight years. Uh, they did lose some players, but man, they bring some length back. Talk about this Sterling team you'll face tonight, Kyle. Yeah, they got really rich tradition there. Um, you know, not only for for guys basketball, but for girls as well. Um, so the Briar kid, I think, is is probably their best player, and he's he's experienced. He's played in the state tournament multiple times, and they're very sound. Um, you know, they're, they're probably the complete opposite of Junction City as far as defense tempo and and trying to pressure you and stuff like that. So on defense, they're gonna maybe play more position and, and try not to make mistakes. Um, so that'll give us a chance to run some offense. Um, and then for them on offense, they kind of run like an overload and try to throw it in there to, the, to their big guys. And and everybody's on the same page. So you can tell that they're really well coached, and, and we definitely got our work cut out for us this evening. Their bigs like to step out, too. They can shoot the three a little bit. So I think they have seven threes a game, the first couple. So uh, kind of that, you know, bigger guys, they can go out and kind of interchangeable a little bit. Yeah, for sure. We're going to play them all to, to be shooters, um, without a doubt. And we got to get up and challenge and kind of talking about some of Braylon's goals. We want him to get out and pressure in the full court and, and maybe kind of wear their point guards down and um, not necessarily get out of position. But I think we can we can use our athletes and, and maybe try to pick up the tempo a little bit and hopefully wear them down by the fourth quarter. Okay, and then uh, you get Sterling tonight, So and then it'll be uh, uh, tomorrow, 4.30 in the afternoon game. You're taking on Conway Springs who lost to Sterling on Tuesday night. Thoughts on uh, the Cardinals? Yeah, we watched that as a, as a team. Uh, we watched probably maybe the first half and a little bit of the third quarter. And, um, you know, as, as a coach, um, you, you try to keep the kids focused. And, and Conway was struggling. So hopefully our guys aren't overconfident when we play Conway. Um, I don't know that we have any reason to be. Um, but they do. They've got a guard. Conway's got a really good guard. I think he scored 23 against Sterling. Um, so if you can score 23 against Sterling and kind of Kind of tells what you're capable of, and then on the inside they've got a guy that's I don't know six five six six, and I know he plays um, a lot of summer basketball. So um, and he maybe doesn't shoot at the best. So hopefully we can push him out on the perimeter and not let him get any touches in the high post or on the block. Similar in style to Sterling offensively and defensively, different or completely different? Uh, yeah, I mean honestly, <laughs> I don't know that I'd put Sterling and Conway on the same the same same level. Uh, they they kind of like to run like a high low offense. They got some big guys, um, and then they kind of run uh, the dribble drive, which is Calipari from, you know, from Kentucky. He's it's kind of what Styles runs at Central Plains, and um, so that kind of gives you an idea what they want to do on offense. And then defensively, um, I don't know that they truly have an identity. Um, they've they've ran a multiple defenses. I think they started in a one two two kind of half court trap, and then eventually switched to a one three one and stuff like that. Um, but we need to go back and watch the third and fourth quarter because um, they hung in there against Sterling. I think when we stopped watching, it was 20-plus, and they only ended up losing by 16 or 18. So we kind of need to see what they did in the second half. Okay. Other teams in this tournament, that 430 game is going to be a lot of fun. Sunrise Academy, you don't know who they're going to show up with, but uh, taking on Lonnie Paramore's Haven Wildcats. So that will be a fun matchup this afternoon at 430. Yeah, and you said it. I mean, you don't necessarily know who Sunrise is going to bring. Um, and, and Perry Moore, he's a, he's a good coach. Um, got the chance to watch them play the other night, and they won. So um, Coach Wells and I are going to head up there a little bit early so we can get the scouting report on Sunrise and try to figure out, um, 
you know exactly what Haven's doing. You know, ideally, uh, in a perfect world, we go two and zero and and probably match up against Haven on Saturday night. Okay, that would be perfect. Uh, you like this pool play format? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously, I think you would want more more teams and and maybe like an eight man bracket, but uh-huh. yeah, I, I don't mind the way that they set it up. And I know, um, you know, Mr. Van Wy there at, at Kingman High School, he he takes care of the kids, and um, they've got guys that come in and make sandwiches and and give the kids drinks and and candy bars and stuff like that. So they do some stuff like outside the lines um, to take care of the teams that come there. What about the media? They make sure you get sandwiches for the media. You know? Yeah, I mean, okay, I definitely, right, yeah, <laughs> I can text him. I can text him when I, well, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, well, you know, it's, that's, that's the important part. Only for the, veter- he, only for the veterans, for the veterans, though. I think, so, yeah, Aaron's got a, yeah, he's got a ways to go. Well, I think the boss took him out for lunch here today on his first day at, at, at work, so I think he, he's going to be okay. He'll so, be all right till tomorrow. Uh, thoughts on some performances of uh, some of the other WAC schools. Uh, Garden City got him three wins out there in Colorado, and Hayes right now two and two, so, uh, uh Thoughts on other WAC teams so far? Yeah, I mean, Dodge, I know they had a tough one against uh, McPherson, but, you know, McPherson a, is a powerhouse, so um, we'll have to go watch. We, we actually have that film already, and then Hayes is 2-2, is two and two, and we had the opportunity to watch some of those Hayes shootout games, and I think I'm, I'm pretty sure they won in overtime against Hugoton, but Hugoton is, is well coached, and they've got some athletes down there. And, and then Garden, they kind of host their own tournament and have teams from, you know, Oklahoma, Texas, Colorado that come in there. Um and I was talking to one of the guys yesterday. The good thing about um, playing the WAC teams after a Christmas break, it's, it gives me some time to spend, you know, 14 to 16 days really preparing for, for all those WAC What would be a good way to, to sum up the WAC this year on boys basketball? A veterans back or a lot of experience back or everybody kind of turn over a little bit? Um, I mean, you never you – know, liberal, liberal is always going to have athletes, um, you know, and it kind of depends on um, their attitude for the evening and what, what they're going to do. Hayes – um, same thing. Oh my gosh, they got athletes top to bottom, but I don't know that they're they're as skilled as Hayes traditionally is. Um, Garden, I know they they've got the Steinmates kid, who's who's probably one of the best players in the league, and um, their coach does a good job there. And and, and Dodge, they're going to try to push everybody left, so that's that's kind of tough to prepare for. Um, so hopefully we're at the top. So. Braylon, this year's team is kind of good. In football, you've got a lot of you know really young players that, that are seeing some time here as a senior, kind of going back. We've got an interesting mix. You know, you got uh, seniors, you got some juniors, and you know, even some freshmen are seeing time right now. Talk about the makeup of this team, and and uh, as a senior, how are you trying to guide everybody along with this? Just trying to keep everybody like level headed, not not trying to do too much, like be a team, play as a team, not trying to score every time you touch the ball or lose your cool. Yeah. Uh, so that'd be kind of fun to play Saturday down there and, and, uh, the championship game, just got to get a couple victories. Uh, your impressions, what you saw with, with coach watching the, the, uh, tape on, uh, Sterling and then again on Conway Springs. What do you think? They're, they're sound, but I think we have better athletes. We can push the ball and just out, outpace them. Well, looking forward to it. And, and coach mentioned those freshmen and, and what a, what a start for, uh, Kramer and, and Hall on, on Friday night. It's just amazing to see freshmen come in anymore and not even seem phased. It's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, and I think those guys, um, since they came in this summer, I think, you know, I don't know that I've seen two freshmen as respected by the upperclassmen as those two. Um, and, and I don't know if they want to admit it or not. But um, it's kind of interesting. Sometimes, obviously, I, I pick teams, and depending on the drill, I switch things up. But sometimes I'll you know, pick two captains of, of guys that are similar and let them pick. And it seems like Jake and Ian are, I mean, they're always in the top five. So um, those guys played well. And, and I think what they do is, you know, they, they don't try to do too much. Um, and But, I mean, if you go back and look at the film, Ian definitely had some turnovers. Jake does a good job on the inside. He's he's pretty strong for a freshman. Um, and, you know, I think Braylon, he had some turnovers early. But, the, you know, he kind of kept his cool and, and some of that stuff, the way he carries himself, translates and, and affects those guys as well. I thought Tyler played pretty well at times the other night. Yeah, and- Tyler's Tyler's awesome. You know, I wish we could get him to talk a little bit more and stuff like that on defense. <laughs> because if you watch film, Tyler knows what he's doing on defense. He's a he's a team defensive guy. Um, he could guard a point guard. He could guard a five. Um, so yeah, we're definitely we're happy that that we got Tyler. And and I don't know that he did a whole lot Friday to hurt us. Um, but we want we want Tyler to shoot more. We want Tyler to shoot. He's got a pretty smooth, smooth three-point shot for a lefty, and um, hopefully, get some chances this week. 
Okay, it's going to be basketball galore here, Braylon Council. So just kind of give me your feelings right now as you get ready to uh, head to Kingman for the first of three here tonight. I'm excited. Excited to be, be around my team and hopefully win, win some games. That would be all right. Coach, your feelings right now heading into uh, three straight days of basketball. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tournament week, and it's always exciting. So, you know, you get to play three games, and, you know, it, it's kind of tough to prepare when you got a game the next day. But we, we've kind of done some work beforehand. So it's tournament week. We want to go get some wins and, and show everybody what these guys are capable of. I don't know that Friday, um, pr- you know, really showed what, what we're made of. Nah, looking forward to it. And uh, to, the AD at uh, Kingman is? Raleigh Man Y. Okay, Raleigh, yep. Yeah, and he's already taken care of us, man. He runs a good tournament, sends boxes out, and you get all the results and everything. So he's way up there right now, man. You throw a sandwich on top, man. I'm, the, Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yep. He's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, he does a good job. All right. Appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, head coach Kyle Cree, Braylon Council with us road, on Sports you have Day. to fill with the king of diesels. We're talking about Cenex Premium Diesel. It comes with a more complete additive package for a more complete burn. Cenex Roadmaster XL even cleans up and prevents injector fouling to keep your trucks out of the shop and on the road. And typical number two diesel? That's always an option. The wrong option. Cenex Premium Diesel. Diesel that doesn't mess around. Contact American Plains Co-op in Great Bend, your certified Cenex distributor today. Learn the skills you need to get started in a new career in as little as one semester with Barton Community College's workforce training programs. Get real-world experience in fields like carpentry, natural gas, plumbing, scales tech, and welding. You can earn money while you go to school because most classes leave you with plenty of time for a part-time job or apprenticeship. Classes begin January 10th. Sign up today and start your new career. Visit GoBarton.com to get started. Add predictability to your nitrogen plan next year with microbial nitrogen products from Pivot Bio. Unlike synthetic fertilizers, Pivot Bio products stay put, adhering directly to the root of the plant and providing a steady dose of nitrogen throughout the most critical growth periods. Plant more predictability next season. Plant Pivot Bio. Contact Eric Blakesley with TNL Ag at 620-282-4227. It's Sports Day on 1590 KVGB and 95.5 FM. Presented by Barton Community College and the Cougar Athletic Department. Ah, Sports Day rolling on on a foggy Thursday. Katie Classic gets going again tonight. And Consolation Bracket Games. Winner's Bracket Semifinals tomorrow night. That'll include the Hoisington Cardinals. The boys, they will be taking on Maxville, ranked second again this week in the uh, Class 1A poll, and uh, that game tomorrow. So, uh, Hoisington against Maxville, 6 o'clock. That's at Larned High School. The Hoisington girls play at 4.30. Kyle Haxton joins us right now, head coach of the Hoisington Cardinals. Coach, you navigated into that uh, semifinal round once again, got a win over Kinsley. Congratulations on that, and uh, thanks for coming on the program today. We lost the coach. You know, I, I wonder if I did. Hesh, you, there you go. So g- give me your thoughts on the matchup tomorrow, and we'll reconnect here. I'm on four. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so I have to kill time while you're dialing. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Roger. Okay, all right. Well, you know, it's um, – Maxville and Hoisington have had some battles over the years. You're more familiar with them than recently. But, you know, as I mentioned earlier in the show, head coach of Maxville, those those guys play hard for that young man. They just get after it. And I have not seen the young the younger Kokelman, who's like 6'4", averaging 18 points a game in their first two games. So it'll be interesting to see how that works. As, you know, Coach Haxton joked with me earlier, the average, Hoisington average is five seven and a half. They're not real tall. So it'll be interesting to see how they can guard uh, the big guy in, I believe it's, um, head coach's name is Ryan, right? I haven't got all this straightened out, but yeah. Coach Cuckelman, Jeff. J- Jeff, and Ryan is the son. Correct. Okay, all right, Jeff. Yeah, okay. So it'll be interesting to see how they're able to uh, play. You know, they played a lot better on Tuesday than they did out in Scott City. That was a good thing to see. He had some veteran leadership step up. 
there's three or four seniors on the ball club, and they all had very good games. And I don't know what's going on there, Coach. Do you? Well, I don't. I don't know either. Here, <laughs> did our phone system no, die? No, you, you're you're doing good. Okay. okay. Yeah, let's, there's. Uh, still... <laughs> we'll just do this the way live we're... radio, yeah, folks. Yeah, That's yeah. all you can say. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Kyle's probably talking and doesn't what know the that. girls matchup tomorrow. Night? <laughs> that, I talked to Bruce Cooper a little bit this morning, and they are, uh, you know, Hoisington played a much better game, as I think I mentioned earlier as well. They have a couple young people that I think are going to uh, bode well for Hoisington Cardinal Lady Basketball in the future. The uh, but they, I mean, they only have one senior, you know, and that's Addie Mason. So they got some good ball. They got, they have a chance to be pretty good the next couple three years, I think, because Kylie Hahn, five ten, she's you know athletic. As is, uh, boy, my names are just losing. They're flying out of the brain right now. Well, that's okay. (laughs) Coach Haxton back with us. Just smooth as always, you know. uh, (laughs) Going right along here. And he will dispute everything I just said. Well, he he will. That's that's what you you do. Coach, thanks for being on the program today. Sorry we lost you there. Uh, No no problem. Back into the semifinals again uh, at the uh, Katy Classic. Always nice to navigate past that first-round game, and you're able to beat Kinsley. Uh, on Tuesday night, talk about that game and uh, getting on to the semis. Well, I thought we improved in a lot of areas that we struggled with uh, from game one out at Scott City. Uh, as you know, we're a real young group and had had a lot of inexperience on the floor. And and then to compile with that, um, our point guard was in foul trouble the majority of the night, and and some of that he had to he has to fix and he has to figure out how to play smart. And, uh, when Layton was on the floor for us for 31 minutes against Kinsley, having that court general made a big difference. We went from 29 turnovers to eight. Um, so I was pleased to see that progress. And then, uh, the confidence that our guys are starting to play with. Talk about Layton going into his senior season, man. He's played a lot of basketball now, uh, going down that final stretch here, a couple games under his belt. Talk about, uh, what your expect, expectations for him this year are and maybe what his are? Well, it's, it's, it's to lead us. I mean, he's got to be a leader for us, and, and he knows that. And I've got uh, four seniors and, and Leighton and, and uh, t- um, sorry, uh, Mason, or um, MJ Elward and uh, Chase Steinert and Braxton Lenzner. Uh, those, those four are going to have to be good court leaders for us, not on, only on the court on game night, but in practice. And, uh, for Leighton, you know he's going to have to he's going to have to score points for us for sure, and, and and he did that the other night against Kinsley, and it's easier to do that when you're on the floor. But he shot the ball well from the arc and had 19 points. But uh, impressively enough, he he also finished with 10 assists for the game. Wow. Um, I haven't had I, I can't remember the last time if I've ever had a, a guy with a double double with points and assists, which is kind of rare to have at the high school level, but. Uh, he's just an unselfish player, as you know, and and that was his role when he was younger: is uh, find those guys, uh, find ways to get to his teammates the ball, and and uh, he did a good job of that as a sophomore and and a junior even. But um, we we do need to have him uh, fill up the, the score sheet a little bit for us too. But uh, we've got some nice pieces to go along with him scoring wise, which Tony Moore's been scoring the basketball. He's averaging over ten points a game, and and um, Chase and MJ really picked up. Um, the slack the other night that they had nine and eight apiece and and played really smart and within themselves and and uh, so it's it's good to get that production from all the guys on the court. Talk about Tony, man. He missed most of last year. Well, he came back after Christmas, but you know, still probably not a hundred percent. But uh, man, it's nice to have him roaring to go right out of the gate this season. Uh, it's a huge difference. Uh, you know, he he did get back for us last year, but uh, as we both know, he never was a hundred percent. And uh, our rhythm really changed when he got back because you're throwing in a, an important piece and a lot of minutes and 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 very little little time on the court. Um, so you know that was that was a a tough year for Tony last year and and even starting this year, you know, trying to figure out uh, what his role is and 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 he does have to score a lot of points for us, but a lot of times it's going to be with his hands w- without his hands being on the basketball. Uh, it, it, waiting on it to come to him uh, to get those buckets. Um, he had a lot of turnovers against Scott City, and then turns around and and plays with uh, a lot of confidence and poise against Kinsley, and and uh, limited his turnovers down to two. So um, that's huge for Tony to be able to recognize that and play to his strengths. And we talk about strengths and weaknesses uh, personnel wise uh, often, and 
and understand that we got to play to our strengths to be productive on the court. And, and Tony's a coachable kid that did just that the other night. Interesting lineup, Kyle, because, you know, you have the seniors and then you have Tony there as a junior, and then you've got two freshmen that are seeing some time here to start the year. Talk about uh, Mason Martin and, and Marcus Ingram. Well, pretty unfair to those boys. Um, you, we don't want to play. We don't want to have to play freshmen, um, especially early in the season. You want to be able to get them uh, acclimated to what what our expectations are and and, and what the program's about. And, um, but you know they they bring a lot to the table, and and, and it starts with how they practice. They either practice very hard. Um, Marcus is just a hard nosed player that's going to dive for loose balls. He's going to play with intelligence. Uh, he's undersized, but really tough. And he gave us minutes of inside linebacker on the football team. So I, I'm not sure he'd be where he's at right now in basketball if it wasn't for what he went through during the fall. Um, so that's that was huge for us. And then uh, Mason Martin as well. Uh, he played he played for us on on Friday nights uh, towards the end of the year. Was giving us reps, and uh, so that that's just huge in small small schools that um, they can generate some of that confidence and and know that they belong and and find a way to hit the ground running. And they're learning as they go here. And um, Mason can flat out shoot a basketball. It's a quick release, and and uh, he's going to have he's going to have some twenty point nights for us this year. I'm I'm 100 percent sure of that, and is the way he can score the basketball. But uh, two really talented guys that unfairly have to play earlier than they needed to because we're dealing with another injury again this year with Jason Robinson, and uh, not I mean being one of our starters from last year, and still not able to be on the court until after Christmas sometime. Okay, and freshmen coming in and playing a lot, and it doesn't seem like they miss a beat. I mean, Gray Ben's got a couple. Sterling will have three tonight playing. We're seeing it all over. Is that because they're playing more in the summer, Kyle? Yeah, it definitely helps a little bit. Um, I know Mason played a a lot in the summer for an AAU team, the Wichita Padres. Um, So he was traveling all over the place on the weekends and Mm -hmm. playing, but uh, you know, I think more so than that, they they just have a ball in their hand. That's what they do. Um, you know, Mason, if if he's looking for something to do, it's probably with a ball in his hand, and and that's how you become a basketball player. It's not by how many necessarily how many games you play on a weekend, but you know, getting in the gym, getting shots up, working on your ball handling, getting the ball in your hand, and um, if you love the game, that's what you're going to do because that's what's going to make you successful. And I think Mason understands that recipe. Kyle Haxton, head coach of the Hoiston Cardinals. They take on Maxville tomorrow in the semifinals of the Katy Classic. So with this year's group, what's changed for you offensively and defensively, some things that maybe you're doing with this group that maybe you haven't done with some others here in recent years? Uh, we're, we're a lot look, different-looking team. Uh, we're, we're small in, in height, um, uh, but we do play tough. Uh, so we're not we're not uh, reluctant to go into a zone. Uh, we'll play in a zone because we know we've got to take care of the paint. And when you got six six Cockleman coming at you, you know an all state kid that that is really good and averaging eighteen and thirteen a game right now through two games. Uh, we know that that's their that's got to be our focus. And uh, he's also their best passer as we've talked about in the past. And and leads them in assist or, or up there with them, um, leading them in assist. And uh, just a smart basketball player that we're going to have to definitely take care of. Um, so we, we'll play some zone, but that doesn't mean we can't play man. We just got to play it fast, and we got to throw a little pressure at at teams. And a lot of times, that's in that that's a little token pressure in the full court, and then some run and jump in the half court. And, and our rotations have got to be good. We're still working on that, um, making sure we're rotating to the next pass and rotating to the ball, and not letting the ball beat us off the dribble when we overclose with two guys running at it. Kyle, what? You've had some good matchups with Maxville in, in this tournament. Seems like you've run into them several times over the last few years. So, uh, what what makes Maxville click? Well, they they always have good guard play. Um, it, right now, they've got five really good guards, and and then a six six post player to go along with that. That that is happens to be their best player on the floor, in my opinion. But uh, you know, they shoot the ball well. They play fast. Um, they're physical defensively. Um, Jeff's done a really good job with them uh, year in and year out, and and they're always they always have a chance to get into a state tournament. It seems um, because they they get better as the year goes on as well. But this is a this is a very um, experienced group that that uh, we we've seen every one of these kids for the most part on the floor, and 
and I haven't even seen Hector Gomez play, and he started for him last year as a freshman. So I, I don't know what that situation is, but um, it, you know, it's just a really, really solid basketball team, and Jeff does a good luck, good job with them. Like I said, makes it tough when you have uh, Ryan Kalkman because you really can't help too much him because he's such a good passer right around the free throw line. Man, that that makes it tough to bring help. It does, and. You know, sometimes you just gotta you gotta decide what you, what you're gonna give up. And I'd rather give up somebody trying to hit threes after threes after threes than give a six six kid an easy take to the basket for, for an easy two. So, because uh, we all know that there's nights that the ball just doesn't want to go in, and um, you know we're not gonna beg them to shoot it because they shoot it too well. But you know, I look at stats and it just blows my mind that they they haven't shot a ton of threes this year, really, um, as well as they shoot it. Yeah, I think they've. Uh, I mean, I'm looking at the stats as we visit here, and they've only they, they've only taken probably half as many threes as we've taken on the year, and um, that just kind of surprises me a little bit. They've taken 27 three point attempts, I think. So uh, 20, 22 is all. Kyle, we've done this a few times over the last few years, so you know what my last question is: feelings going into the semifinals and the last two days, of the Katie Classic starting tomorrow night. I just I just want to continue to get better, you know, and and let the end result take care of itself. And, uh, if we can see progress, like taking care of the ball, going from twenty nine to eight turnovers, and keep that turnover number under ten against a team that likes to pressure like Maxwell does, even in the half court, um, I, you know, I think we're going to have a good chance because we shoot the ball really well. Um, I mean, we're shooting from three point uh, range. We're shooting the ball incredibly well. We shot all, over forty percent the other night as a team. Uh, if we can do that and, and find a way to get some easy buckets, uh, I think we're going to give them a, a great contest. And, um, you know, if we're in it down to the end uh, and it comes down to executing at the end of a game, I, I like where we're at as far as understanding some sets and, and taking advantage of some some mismatches that we have as well against a group like Maxville. Kyle, uh, appreciate the time today. Good luck tomorrow. And we still owe you a crockpot for appearing on the Ealer Chevrolet pregame show all those years, so we'll try to get that over to you, too. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a bunch. All right. Thank you, Steve. You bet. Kyle Haxton joining us here on Sports Day. From the Mayo Money Management Studios, 1590 KVGB, Gray Bend, and 95.5 FM K238 CK, Hoisington. Today's another instant finalist day in the shop at home for the holidays. $10,000 shopping spree presented by Bauer Computers and Mater Plumbing Heating and Air, your Bryant dealer. The place to be today, Rosewood Bargain Barn at 1215 Main Street. Stop on in and scan the QR code before 5 o'clock and get yourself registered. And you can always find great deals at Rosewood Bargain Barn, a unique resale store where you'll find quality resale products, including furniture, appliances, rugs, exercise equipment, and a variety of home decor pieces. And you can enjoy their holiday holiday sale and purchase a fun, beautifully wrapped holiday mystery box. But that's not all. When you shop at Bargain Barn, all the proceeds go to Rosewood Roots and Wings Foundation, which helps to advance and improve the lives of people with developmental disabilities. You have until 5 o'clock today to scan the QR code and get yourself qualified at Rosewood Bargain Barn, 1215 Main Street in Great Bend for the Shop at Home for the Holidays $10,000 shopping spree. Presented by Bauer Computers and Mater Plumbing Heating and Air, your Bryant dealer. H&B Communications in Hollywood knows that the Internet can be a scary place these days. That's why H&B offers information technology services for business. From full network management and support to protection from intrusions and data loss and comprehensive training for your staff, H&B can design a business IT network to keep your data safe in our ever-changing cyber world. Find out more about information technology services by calling H&B Communications in Hollywood. Committed to connection. Venture Corporation is a homegrown company with almost 50 years of experience in asphalt, paving, and construction. They have quite a few jobs scheduled for the new year, and they need equipment operators, mechanics, and CDL drivers. Venture offers many benefits, including 401k and Blue Cross Blue Shield health insurance. Call Leslie for all the details. Work for a family-owned and family-oriented company that is here today and will be here in the future. Venture Corporation, South Highway 281, Great Bend, is an equal opportunity employer. Minor sickness or injury doesn't always happen during your doctor's regular office hours. So when you need care, the team at the University of Kansas Health System Convenient Care Walk-In Clinic is available for you. Walk in 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. No appointment needed. 
Let the experienced team at the Convenient Care Walk-In Clinic at St. Rose Medical Pavilion care for you. Learn more at kansashealthsystem.com slash greatbend. When you need to get rid of the pain, you want the best. You need to see Dr. Dan Quillen at Catalyst Therapy and Sports Rehab. Dr. Dan is Barton County's only board-certified clinical specialist in orthopedic physical therapy. No matter your age, when it hurts, he will help. Call Dan at 620-282-4825. That's 282-4825. Excellence-driven, unrivaled results. Catalyst Therapy and Sports Rehab. Inside the Fieldhouse at 9th and Madison and Great Bend. Sports Day proudly presents... Hey, you! Get off my yard! A look at what's bugging our grumpy old sports hosts. <laughs> Where do we begin? Where do we uh, that's begin That's what I was thinking. I got four or five rumbling around in the old okay, brain. Okay, mine is going to be high school basketball rosters. Basketball. Basketball rosters. This isn't a football ro- Basketball rosters that come out... And they're all in the same. And they don't list how tall they are okay right isn't that kind of important on you know trying to get a feel for give me heights and they're <laughs> cla- they're great and that's i mean what else can you do but no and my other thing on that is that at least in the smaller schools they list them all together so you can't tell who's varsity and junior varsity well that's all right i can handle well, that. Uh, that's the one because you always have the okay, you figure the varsity, and then somebody comes from the junior well, varsity, you don't get them on your list. So okay, okay, and yours would be from this morning. You and Mike Corson talking about the taxpayer situation where they just got the bills out to us, right? <laughs> you know, we just got them. And my question is, okay, we heard Sean Hutchinson and a couple other people talking about how there's fifty six or fifty eight entities that have to supply information. Correct? Yeah, I have a solution. Call out the people who don't get them in on time. <laughs> they always say, if you have an argument, bring a solution, right? But you know that'll never happen because we protect our government so much. <laughs> wow. Wow. We just had an appearing today <laughs> on the Markley Van Camp and Robin show. That's is, up at 2.15. I got to call in. Is Mike Hesher. <laughs> uh, back to our final segment after this. Let technology bring you closer this holiday season to loved ones near and far. With unlimited data as low as $25 a month, you can get the phone you want with the features you need from the best people. Next Tech Wireless, keeping Kansans connected. Learn the skills you need to get started in a new career in as little as one semester with Barton Community College's workforce training programs. Get real-world experience in fields like carpentry, natural gas, plumbing, scales tech, and welding. You can earn money while you go to school because most classes leave you with plenty of time for a part-time job or apprenticeship. Classes begin January 10th. Sign up today and start your new career. Visit GoBarton.com to get started. All right. We have Larned basketball tonight. Larned girls and boys over on Hits 106.9 on B1043, the point. We'll have Great Bend Panther, but I'm looking forward to it today. Uh, I think the Lady Panthers will cruise okay. Boys will be challenged, but I, I agree with Kyle Cree. They didn't show, I mean, they just got out of hand at Junction City. They've got some good young players. They've got some veteran players. I think it's Great Bend Boys basketball team is going to be a team to watch. I think they're going to improve, and this will be a good test for them. Sterling, not a bad team, ranked seventh in Class 2A. They just blew Hill, Hillsborough out of their own gym last week. They were up by 27 in the Against Hillsborough? Half. Yeah. They really? Ended up winning by six, but they were in control. So, a good test tonight. Looking forward to it. And safe travels. Okay. Thank you, sir. Well, uh, the boys will be back here for you for Sports Day tomorrow on 1590 KVGB 955 FM.